Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is going well. We, we are very fortunate as, as descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have inherited a love and fear of Hashem. So, of course, we inherited as being sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the sons of Israel. We have um, inherited the Torah as, as, a, as an inheritance, as an obligation, as a way of life. We also inherited a love and a fear of Hashem. So we learn in Hasidus that a person doesn't have to go and do backflips and do somersaults to, to develop a love and a fear of Hashem. By simply thinking about Hashem for a little bit, they, a person is able to uncover the love and fear of Hashem that's been there all along. So it's really, it's really a, we're starting at a great advantage point. We don't have to create these feelings of love and fear of Hashem. We just have to uncover what's already there. How do we uncover what's already there? Good example that uh, Baruch Hashem I've been able to 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 use, to, you know, to, uh, a good way of helping me work on my love and fear of Hashem is we use examples that we f situations that we find ourselves in. Let's say, for example, you know, a person's uh, a person's parents makes delicious food for them, and they feel their parents' love for them when they make their favorite dish. And that food is an expression of their parents' love for them. They feel very great comfort when eating this food. And to the point where a person, you know, if he's walking down the street and he's away from home, and he's been away from home for a while, if he smells the same smell that their parents' food used to smell like, they're going to feel aroused, a feeling of love and f a love for their parents and a longing and missing their parents and a desire to be reunited with their parents. So, so this, so then we could take this example and recognize that, wait, if Hashem... Who's the one who gives my parents the ability to make this food? Who's the one who decided that this, these people will be my parents and that I'll have this connection to them? It's Hashem all along. So Hashem is really the author, so to speak, the, the one designing this whole situation altogether. So whenever you feel in a, f a life situation, you feel a feeling of love, you feel a feeling of fear, you feel a pleasurable feeling, you have to recognize that Hashem is behind it all. So when you hear like a beautiful song and it arouses, you know, emotions within you. So to recognize that this song is just a little glimpse at, 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 the, at the one who created this song, who's Hashem. And this can catapult you to a higher level of feeling of love and fear of Hashem. You know, a, a, another example that, that, that we can think of is when a person sees a child, a child doing a very adorable act, whatever it may be. So the person develops, it activates a feeling of love and love for this child, a feeling of, you know, adoration, adoration for this child, a feeling of, of you know, excitement towards this child because they're so pure, they're so innocent, they're so adorable. And everything they do is with such grace and such beauty. So we can use this to, to, to remember that we are Hashem's children. And so if I feel this, this amount of love and this amount of ador finding this child so adorable and so excited by this child, by their presence and wanting to be around the child because of how, how beautiful they are and how just spiritually and physically. If I feel this, this way just about a child, so how much more so does Hashem feel about me? Because I am a sh Hashem's baby. We all are Hashem's ch children, Hashem's babies. So our love for this child is limited. It's a very powerful, you know, uh, feeling when we when we're when we're with children. The, the you know the love we have for these children, the the desire to to help them and to, to to cause them comfort and to take away any of their pain and to to take care of them, to guard them. You know, so we're sorry about that. <laughs> so we're limited beings. Since we're limited beings, so our feelings towards this child is, is limited, but Hashem is beyond infinite. So imagine how much love and how much adoration, how beautiful Hashem finds us. So that Hashem, we could, you know, to maximize this, of course, we want to we be fulfilling Hashem's will to the maximum potential. But when we, when we meditate upon this idea, we'll find, we'll find ourselves, wow, if, I, if a parent feels this much love for the child, how much more so will Hashem, the ultimate creator, feel love towards me? And we see this sometimes. A parent has to do something that even though they love the child more than the child loves themselves and they don't want to cause the child any uncomfort 
and they want to make the child as happy as possible, sometimes they have to do things to the child that the child doesn't want. For example, the child may want to eat a lot of candy. The parent's not going to allow it. So the child's going to cry and he's going to want it. But the parent is going to actually cause the child a bit of discomfort. But really, it's for the ultimate purpose of actually later on causing the child comfort. Because really, if he gives the child all the comfort he wants with no boundaries, with no free free for all the child's going to develop he could develop problems and he could later on develop a lot of a lot of discomfort based off that initial free reign of comfort so too how much more so with the shem that the ch- parent the child eventually will recognize fully that the parents restricting them from eating all the candy and restricting them from doing what they wanted actually helped them develop into the person they are today the good person they are today so the child will appreciate that. So how much more so should we appreciate when we find ourselves in difficult situations and challenging and troubling situations that if Hashem is willing to put us in this, un- this uncomfortable situation that there's a greater purpose here, that it's really for the ultimate purpose of bringing us the true comfort. In the days of Mashiach, Bezat Hashem, will have eternal comfort with the revelation of the Creator. And it's important that we know that in the end this will all make sense because... Hashem feels our pain more than we feel it. And we are truly a part of Him. Therefore, if He's putting us in this difficult situation, we have to reflect, we have to belitt- make ourselves smaller in the sense to recognize how much greater Hashem is than each and every one of us, how much more He knows, and how much more He cares about us than we even care about ourselves. And when we become, when we come to know this, we don't just understand it, but we bring it into our emotions, into our reality, it becomes infused within us that Hashem loves us more than we love ourselves and He wants the best for us and every situation we find our in, ourselves in is for the good. When we recognize this, we'll be able to live our lives in a way of accepting Hashem as King over us. And then every mitzvah, every positive deed we do will be with, in a way with force and with excitement. Therefore, we have to take this recognition and live it. It's not enough to just understand it, but to act upon this re- this recognition that Hashem is the only true reality and we are just an extension of Him and He's the one who gives us every fiber of life comes from Hashem. And of course, if you're a Gentile, you, have to, you can use this energy by fulfilling the seven laws of Noah, seven laws of Noah by recognizing that your purpose is to bring service of Hashem through the seven laws of Noah into the world and to spread with others. And that ultimately completely brings the world, prepares the world for redemption, where Jew and Gentile will all see Hashem's revelation throughout the entire world. May Hashem bless you, and may we merit to reach this level now. Thank you, God bless you.